So let's say God bless Sister Lisa. And God bless all of you. I agree that there's just something about seeing each other in person, being in person. In fact, I got the privilege of having Rebecca at my house this weekend, and we were just talking about that on the way to church this morning, as to why God created us that way, where we really need to be together in church to hear the word of the Lord. And we're so grateful to have all those other methods, and we're so grateful to have the Bible that we can study on our own, but there's just something about being with the people of God and hearing directly in person from our pastor, who is heard directly from the Lord. There's just something about it. So I am thrilled to see all you. It uh, brings me great joy that you, all, that you all are here. And all the rest of you who you know, I love so much. And Brody's back, yay! Glad to see you too. All right, so today I want to talk to you about wait for it. Has anybody ever heard that phrase? Wait for it, wait for it. That's what we're going to talk about this morning. And this has been a reoccurring theme for me um, over the last, I can't hear myself echoing, sorry, with the live stream. Um, this has been a reoccurring theme for me that the Lord has been speaking directly to me and like harshly to me about wait for it, just wait for it. And so that's what I want to talk to you about this morning. So I thought we would start with a song, an old school song, where I don't have to make you do a whole bunch of motions, but I do have to make you move around, because y'all are staring at me and making me nervous right now. <laughs> so we're going to go old school, and as we wait for it, as we wait for what the Lord is going to do, as we wait for the end, the hope, our expectation of what he is going to do for us, what should we do? We should praise the Lord, right? And as we praise the Lord, giving him praise for what he's doing, it reminds us of who he is, and that helps us to say hallelujah and surrender to him. Praising him and surrendering to him. So we're going to do the old school song, hallelujah, 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 praise ye the Lord. And yes, I'm going to make you all stand and sit and stand and sit. Even if you're scowling at me. All right, so this side is going to be the hallelujahs. This side is going to be the praise ye the lords. And so you guys are praise ye the lords nice and loud, okay? All right, don't get tricked. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. 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 Now we're going to switch sides. Hallelujah. 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 Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise ye the Lord, praise ye the Lord, hallelujah, praise ye the Lord, hallelujah, praise ye the Lord, hallelujah, everybody, praise ye the Lord. Let's do that. Let's give him some praise. I praise you, Jesus. I praise you, Jesus. He is worthy of our praise, and one day we will know that without a doubt. Uh, while you're still standing, half of you, the other half can join. Let's turn to Romans 5. I'm going to read you for the first four verses out of Romans 5. Romans 5, verses 1 through 4. All right, my Sunday school kiddos, Romans, Old Testament or New Testament? It was a church... So it's New New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts, and Romans. Good. All right. Is everyone there? Romans 5. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so... But we glory in tribulations also, 
knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which he has given unto us. Thank you. You may be seated. So bear with me while I talk about this verse just for a minute, and then we're going to do some fun stuff up here. And I'm going to have the kids come up for the fun stuff, but then I'm going to open it up in case any of you adults want to take a whack at the problem up here. All right, so Romans 5 started with what word? What word was there? Therefore, therefore. whenever you see the word therefore, you have to find out what it's. Therefore, so I apologize that I'm starting in the middle here with a therefore. So you guys got to go back and find out what the therefore is there for. But therefore, being justified by faith, being justified, being freed, being shown to be righteous by what? By faith. And that's what we're studying in Sunday school right now. We are going to Mars and beyond, and we have gone to the planet, what planet, kids? The planet Truth to find out what faith really is. And the planet truth is covered by all this fog and dense clouds, and we have to dig through all those clouds and fogs to get to truth. And the only way you know truth is through the word of God. There's all the clouds and fogs in this world, all this tradition that surrounds everything, and you can think you know truth, but until you dig in and find it in the Bible, you don't know truth. And that's one of the things we're studying is faith. What does faith really mean? Is it what tradition says it is? Is it just a hoping and a trusting? What is faith, my kiddos, who've been studying it? That's right. We have to study our Bible to find out that faith is knowing God, knowing who he is, having that relationship with him. It's not blind trust. It's not just hoping things are going to turn out right, hoping that God's going to handle stuff. It's knowing him and knowing how he does things so you can act in harmony with him. That's how we're justified. That's how we're saved. That's how we're freed. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have what? What's the next word? We have peace. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So in this verse, we just had step number one. We just heard about faith, right? And once you have step number one, it leads you right to step number two. And we have that here. We have peace. I'd like you all to take your hand, one hand, and put it up like this. And the other hand, put it like this. And this is sign language for peace. You bring the two hands together, and then you turn them in harmony and come down calmly. Try that again. Two hands. Peace. Peace. And so in Sunday school, we learned that this is the peace of God. This is us acting in harmony with God. This is God saying, this is truth. This is who I am. This is who you are. And us agreeing, saying, yep, that's who you are. And this is who I am. And boy, do I need you. And we, once we agree that we need him, we are in harmony with him. And our life becomes full of peace. Because we're not at odds with him anymore. We're not at enmity with him anymore. We are acting in harmony with him. And that gives us peace. And that's what this verse is talking about next, that being justified by faith, by our knowledge of who Jesus is, not by our emotion that we get, but by our knowledge of who he is, that we have peace through the Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we, how do we respond? Step number three, what does it say? Wherein we, look at your verse, Romans 5, we're in verse 2. Yes, we stand and do what? Rejoice. That's our response. That's step number three. When we know who he is and we act in harmony with him, our response is to stand and rejoice. Rejoice in what? Rejoice in hope. Rejoice in hope of the glory of God. That's the wait for it. Wait for it, you guys, because right now things aren't so great all the time. In fact, I think things get worse and worse as time goes on or more difficult for us to handle as the things pile on and pile on. But wait for it. We have hope. We can rejoice in the hope of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then, of course, we get into these next verses, which we're like, oh, really? So I'm going to read some of this to you from the Living Bible, which makes it really clear. Starting at verse 3, the Living Bible says, We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they are 
good for us. Really? I mean, the Bible says it. It is the living Bible translation, so maybe it didn't really mean good for you. But if you go into the King James and you look that up, that's what it means. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. So that living version says, for we know they are good for us. Does anyone feel like your problems are good for you? I didn't say no, I said feel. Does anyone feel like their problems are good for them? I don't feel that way at all. I feel like all these problems should go away and I should just feel happy and feel enjoyment and not feel all these problems. But it's the world we live in. It's our life. And it's also what the Bible is going to say next. They are good for us. They help us learn to be patient. So guess what step patience is? That's step number five. God's ways right in order in these verses. So they are good for us. They help us learn to be patient. And patience develops strength of character in us and helps us trust God more each time we use it until finally our hope and our faith are strong and steady. That's what I want, to be strong, a strong Christian and a steady Christian, not to waver when life throws me punches, but to be strong and steady with the Lord because I know him. Not because of me, but because I know him. Verse 5 in the Living Bible says, Then when that happens, we are able to hold our heads high no matter what happens and know that all is well. For we know how dearly God loves us and we feel this warm love everywhere within us because God has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. So our human reaction is really, problems are good for me. Really, there's something else. When's the next shoe going to drop? What else is coming? Bring it. Bring it. There's like five things going wrong. I had one moment of good and like it was sunny and there was something fun going on and my family's together and then bam. What's the next thing going to happen? That's our human reaction, right? But the spiritual reaction is God says it's good for us. God says he can use that bad. He can use that intensity. He can use even those emotions to work in us what needs to be worked out. And that's really what we want, isn't it? I mean, you're here today because you want the Lord to work in your heart. You're here to hear from the Lord himself. You're here to hear what he's told our pastor to preach to us so that he will work in our heart and make us who he wants us to be. So the most important thing is not to focus on those problems, but focus on what the Lord is going to do. Wait for it. Wait for it. What's he going to do through that trouble? What's he going to do through that problem? The end result, I promise you, is going to be worth it. And the only way you know that for sure, and don't have to take my word for it, is if you have faith. If you know who God is, you know how he works, you know his love for you, then you know that the end is going to be worth it. And I think Pastor John said that several times in the message last week too. You may not feel happy in the moment. You may not feel like things are going right, but wait for it. The end is good. We have hope. We have that expectation of what the Lord is going to give us. So to illustrate that for you in kind of a dangerous way, but a satisfying way, I so want to do this myself, but I will let you guys do it. We are going to use this. What is this thing called? It's a pinata. Sydney, what do we do with a pinata? We smash into it. That's right. We get to hit something until it breaks, right? I mean, good stuff. So, a piñata, does anyone see what I have written on it? What is this supposed to represent? This is our life. Does anybody feel like a piñata sometimes? <laughs> yeah, I do. Like, the next thing, the next hit's coming, the next hit's coming, right? And what happens when a piñata gets hit? What happens to it? It gets beat up. It gets a hole in it, and eventually, even though it's destroyed and beat up and there's holes in it and it looks terrible, just what Brody said, what comes out? Candy and prizes and good, sweet stuff comes out. If the person who has made your life has built that in. And we know that the Lord Jesus has built that in for us that he has the sweet stuff for us. He has the good that he's changing in us. 
So who would like to come up here and see if when life beats you down, if you just wait for it, there will be sweet stuff at the end. All right, so kiddos come up first. Seriously, I'm not kidding. Any adults who want in on this, I mean, this is some frustration relief. Come in behind the kids. You can whack this thing. All right, now I'm a little afraid of all you guys. You're going to have a stick. I should be. You're going to have a stick and you're going to be whacking. All right. All right, so line up side to side. We'll just start here and I'll go right around, but we, we never want to block the camera there. You got that? All right, now I'm going to hold this way out and you're going to whack this thing. Now, what is this again? This is our life. Oh, sorry for the microphone there. This is our life. And what happens in our life? We get beat up. Stuff happens and we feel like, oh my goodness. All right, walk yourself way out there. Woo! All right, hit it again. Woo! Pass it to your sister. Pass it on. All right, go way out there because you guys are scaring me. Whoa! Oh, all right, pass it to Sammy. All right, Sammy, you come on this side. Now, you girls, you go over there. Hang on, Sammy, hang on. Ooh, you're scaring me. You come over here. All right, now hold on. All right. Woo! Ah, okay, okay. Pass it on. Come on over here. Brother Lou, you're like in the danger zone. <laughs> you may want to move. <laughs> For real, you may want to move over there. <laughs> All right, wait, wait, wait. You're gonna move over there so you don't hit me. Don't, don't go till I say go, okay? All right, hit it. Ah! Ah! Okay, pass it on. I know, it is coming off. All right, Brody, that side. Go over there so we don't hit any kids behind you. Don't hit it yet, don't hit it yet. I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared. Bubbles and toys in there too. Oh, you just dumped it all out. All right, pick it all, pick it all up, dump it back in, grab handfuls, and I'll bring the rest into Sunday school. Dump it all in there. I can't, I can't hold. All right, go, go ahead, Sammy. Go back to your, go back to your seat with all your loot, with all your loot. All right, all right. Thank you, thank you. I promise to vacuum the altar area after church, Pastor. <laughs> All right, you guys, it's a real easy illustration, but it's true, right? Our life, we feel like we're beat up. We feel like, oh my goodness, when is the next hit coming? We feel like we're broken in half. We feel like there's holes in us. But if we just wait for it, if we wait for the end, the result will be sweet. We will be with the Lord Jesus. He will accomplish in us what he wants to accomplish, which is what's best for us and which is what we ultimately want. So what do we need to do when we think of that, even though we're going through trials and struggles, we need to think, praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. That's what we need to do. So let's do that again. Are you ready? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord, praise ye the Lord, hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord, hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord, hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. I give you praise, Lord. I give you praise. You are worthy, Lord Jesus. You are worthy. The Lord is so good to us. He gives us wisdom in the moment. For instance, I had the urge to take a running dive off the platform to get some candy. And wisdom spoke in my ear and said, you are far too old to try something like that. And it would not be a good look. 
And you might land on some of the kids. And none of that would be good. So instead of you all getting the joy of seeing me, you know, do the full dive off the platform. How good is our God? I love that illustration because sometimes we feel like the pinata. But if we could turn our energies and our focus off of us to the one who is good. Instead of looking for the good in a situation, we can look for the good in the universe. The one who is good. He is such a wonderful Savior. I am so grateful to know him and for the privilege of serving him. This morning, we have a treat. Our friend, Brother Donald Cash from Tennessee, is here to preach. Knowing that he was going to be here, he, he's a good friend and he lets me know when he's going to be in town so that I can make him preach and therefore have a day off. He does, you know, he just knows I, I want the day off. But uh, I was able to go visit a friend of mine that I hadn't, uh, two friends of mine that I hadn't seen in 20 in a long time, in a couple of decades. I never had a chance to kind of close that gap and, and tell them how much they meant to me and how much their friendship had meant to me. And yesterday I was able to go and spend some time with them and, and some other friends I had known from way back. And it was such a great time of fellowship. And then it was a long drive, so I was able to make some phone calls and talk to some people I hadn't connected to in a long time. And God used that moment to really give me some rest. And there's something that being able to talk to people and you know that you love and, and being close and just not even working, just sitting around and having conversation. That gave such a, a peace to my life that I desperately needed. So Brother Cash, I thank you so much for giving me that space to do that. And so I'll stop talking now and I'll turn it over to him. But let's all say God bless, Brother Cash. Amen. Have your liberty, brother. <laughs> Just kidding. I was going to do this, but I come to find out this doesn't mean peace anymore, so what am I going to do? No. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. It's good to be with you all. You're all standing, so we'll go straight in the Word of God. We'll be reading from three main texts of Scripture. We'll be reading from John 1, Psalm 107, Genesis 21. John 1, Psalm 107, Genesis 21. It's good to see my parents and my nephew. It's good to be with you all. It's always a privilege to be here and to be able to minister. Um, I would be remiss if I did not mention Bishop Readout and Sister Readout that have had such an influence on my life. And I can't say much more without getting emotional, kind of like... My oldest friend, which we'll get to her in a second. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Readout, and First Lady Readout. Hallelujah. And then my oldest friend, who always bails me out, let Rebecca stay there last minute, called her up last minute. She came and did a Sunday school training seminar with our church last year, and I had it scheduled in like October, and I'm like, yeah, Lisa, I need you to come in July. No problem. No problem. And, uh, you know, she, such a blessing. And, and at the time, we had zero kids. We have 11 kids when everybody's there now. Yeah. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. You guys ready to go here? I'm ready to go. John 1. Starting from verse 10. He was in the world, 
and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Somebody say hallelujah. 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 Psalm 107, starting from verse 31. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them exalt him also in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders. Did Lisa just talk about what we do in tribulation? Praise in tribulation. Hallelujah. Verse 33. He turneth rivers into wilderness and the water springs into dry ground and fruitful land into barrenness for the wickedness of them that dwell therein. He turneth the wilderness into a standing water and dry ground into water springs. Hallelujah. Genesis 21, hallelujah, Hallelujah. starting from verse 14, Genesis 21, 14, and Abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and a bottle of water and gave it unto Hagar, putting it on her shoulder and the child and sent her away and she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. The water was spent in the bottle, and she cast the child under one of the shrubs. And she sat down, and she sat down, and she went, and she sat down over against him, a good way off, as it were, a a bow shot, and she said, let me not see the death of the child. And she sat over against him and lifted up her voice and wept. If the scripture ended there, it'd be a sad story. But then there's verse 17. And God heard the voice of the lad, and the angel of God called unto Hagar out of heaven and said unto her, What aileth thee, Hagar? Fear not, for God hath heard the voice of the lad where he is. Arise. Lift up the lad and hold him in thine hand, for I will make him a great nation. And God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water, and she went and filled the bottle with water and gave the lad drink. Hallelujah. I'm going to preach to you a question. What aileth thee? What aileth thee? Thee. Let's give thanks for the word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the opportunity to come into your house to hear your word and to worship you. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your anointed word of God. Your, the, the word that changing the spring of water, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We give you thanks and praise for it always in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. you may be seated. Thank you for standing. What aileth thee? Well, I can tell you what was ailing me this morning. I opened up my suitcase and saw that I didn't have any ties packed and no belts packed. I had a master plan. I'm like, this is an opportunity. I am going to transition from belts to suspenders. Because suspenders is based on my height. (laughs) So just to recap, I am not overweight, I am short. (laughs) Until I went to Burlington Coat Factory this morning and they didn't have any suspenders. So I was reminded about my waist. 
Praise the Lord. So that was what aileth me this morning. But all just aside, there's people with some serious problems in this world. The illustration of the pinata was, uh, yeah, that's, that's the way it feels sometimes, right? Feel like a pinata getting beat? And, but there's a spoiler alert here. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. And the world knew him not. Think of all the pinata beating that the world was going through because they didn't know him. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Think of all the beatings, unnecessary beatings that took place because they didn't, his own didn't receive them. And then there's that wonderful word, but. You know, it's funny, we're drive, driving up, listen to my, my buddy preaching a little bit, listen to to uh, Bishop Readout preaching a little bit. And, uh, and uh, there was a lot of patterns in my preaching that was rec- recognized with, you know, the, the young people that are, are, came, came up, we came up together through ALI. But then, then we listened to a little bit of Paul Mooney, Brother Mooney, and, and he was talking about our apostolic identity. And then we really wanted to have a good time, and we were listening to Brother Johnny James, and uh, he talked about buts. And me, I know what you're taught here. I know you're taught that the conjunction but is a redo- re- revolving door word. Men and women would just know the Lord and praise the Lord. All the unneeded. I mean, it's bad enough going through tribulations, and we know that the trials of our faith. Sister Lisa was talking about tribulations and what comes of the tribulation. And good things come, all things work together for good, right? Painful thing. Oh yeah, no, no. I'm ministering to them today. Oh yeah. So we know this, right? We know this. And then there's that objection in Psalm 107. Oh, that men would praise the Lord. For his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. We forget about his love and kindness. Make no mistake about it, that's what brought upon this preaching, this speech, this ministering, whatever you want to call it this morning. Psalm 107. And if you guys have your Bibles open to Psalm 107, we'll do some reading in here. Because it's powerful. And so the very last verse is what brought this about. Whoso is wise and will observe these things... Even shall they understand the loving kindness of the Lord. Well, that's heavy inclination to start reading from the beginning of the chapter, right? Verse 1, 
Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. I am here to preach to you, to remind you today to praise the Lord, just like Sister Lisa just did. Praise the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. He is the one, he is the one, he is the one that provides the famine and he provides the water. We read that in Psalm 107, that little chunk. I would have liked to read all the verses. But he's the one that causes the famine. What? 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 Really? I can't blame the devil? A lot of people... Hmm, a lot of you are fixing to go to ALI, so I don't have to talk about Job, but a lot of people like to give credit to the devil when he was nothing but just an instrument to make Job better. The tribulations, the pain, the suffering, the being beat, it's just making you better. I'm not here saying no pain, no gain. I remember going to wrestling camp and the uh, instructor said, you know, while they're running us and, and pushing, making us do all insane physical labor, uh, they said, mind over matter. If you don't mind, it don't matter. <laughs> oh, I mind. But if we could have that attitude and glory in the tribulations and give praise unto God, Give praise unto God. Which takes us to Hagar, right? Egyptian slave to Sarah. Sarah didn't get what she wanted. So she took her slave and said, Bear me a child from my husband. She, when she got pregnant, surprise. Hagar despised Sarah for it. And it's funny, uh, the Bible actually goes out of its way to mention that Sarah dealt harshly or hardly, depending on which translation you look at, with Hagar. And she ran away. And the Lord spoke to Hagar, she says, you go back, you submit yourself. Really, God? Really? I got to go back under the tyranny and oppression and the, the, you don't know what abuse I had to sustain under her. Go back, submit yourself. And then what happens? She gives birth, and surprise, surprise, Ishmael and Isaac didn't get along. Sarah goes, get her out. And it upset Abraham, it did. But God says, no, no, listen to your wife. That's good advice. To us husbands, listen to your wife. The wives are smiling. I'm not smiling. Because yeah, that's what was right. That's what God wanted. And so Hagar, this Egyptian slave that's been abused by her mistress ran away, God sends her back. Don't think it got much better for her once she went back. Gives birth. The son is not 
the one that has the birthright, doesn't have the blessing, is the one that's the outcast, is the one that's always looked over. It's the, oh, that's just Ishmael. Where's Isaac? Where's the special one? Where's the one I care about? Where's the one that's getting the inheritance? Where's the one that's getting the blessing? Where is Isaac? Isaac, 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 Isaac. I wonder what kind of impact that had on Ishmael's psyche. And she goes, she submits herself to that. The slave that gave birth to Abraham and Sarah's mistake, their sin, their disobedience to God, their not trusting in God. Yeah, I'm sure that worked out real well. I bet that was a great seven years. And then she gets booted out with a a roll and a bottle of water. Adios. Sometimes I wonder, <laughs> are my problems really that big <laughs> when I read some of these stories? You, you think you've been you know, oppressed, you think you've been picked on, you think you've been, you know, mistreated. But then you read about, like, people like Hagar, right? And then, so Hagar, you know, hides Ishmael, goes, moves away from him. I can't see him die. I'm not a mother, I don't know what that feels like. I do have children, so I understand maybe a little bit, but then God comes and meets with Hagar and says, what aileth thee? God cares. He does. But at the same time, that wasn't a question of what's your excuse for being upset, right? I promised you something. I, I promised you something. And so, what's, what, what are you upset about, Hagar? Give praise to the Lord. I have no food. I have no water. We're going to die of starvation. Those are my immediate concerns. <laughs> this is what's interesting to me. Is it says, not that God touched the ground and created an oasis of water. He said, he opened her eyes. And she saw that there was water. If we would just change our perspective or pray to God to change our perspective and get our mind off our whatever history, whatever oppression, whatever tyranny, Whatever reason we have to feel sorry for ourselves or feel like we've been cast down or we've been mistreated or we've been this or we've been that. Oh, if men and women would just give praise unto God. Hallelujah. For his goodness, for his mercy. And then our perspective changes. And then it's not, oh no, poor me, my situation, my this, my pain, my that, my whatever. It's, oh, the goodness of God 
It is he that dries the ground and it's he that causes the oasis. But you don't understand. You don't understand. I'm just a slave. My son is the castaway, the mistake. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. You are not a slave. You are not a slave. You are a son and daughter of God. You belong to the Almighty. You belong to the great Creator. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not unto us. Not unto us, O oh God, but unto thy name be all glory. Hallelujah. I'm not going to glory in my shortcomings, in my hurts, in my pains. I'm not going to sit there and feel sorry for myself anymore. I'm going to give glory and praise unto God who's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. And we can go into it and we can dig deeper and there's a lot to be done here. I'm not going to meddle today. Not too much. I should have just left it at There's so much on this bone. There's so much meat on this bone. Read Psalm 107. <laughs> I read Hosea chapter 2. Just a prostitute. There is no excuse for not giving God praise. You're no longer going to call me your owner or your master. You're going to call me husband, he says to us. All our sins, all our shortcomings, all our failures. It doesn't matter anymore because we belong to God. We belong to God. But as many as received him, to them gave thee power to become the sons of God. Hallelujah. And if you want to cross-reference that, to, we use the symmetry or typology of water. Them that believe, out of their bellies shall flow rivers of living water. We talked about faith today our intimate knowledge of God. And we know that believing is faith plus works. Yes. To them, gave you power to become the sons of God. Out of their bellies shall flow rivers of living water. And then you can come back and you can say, you know, I don't know what you've been through. I don't know what you've been through. But I know this one thing, oh, that if you would just, if men would just praise the Lord for who he is. If you just knew who he was and praise him for who he was, God would take care of everything. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And don't think that you can sit there. Let me rephrase. And the prisoners heard them. Thank you, Jesus.
Thank you, Jesus. I, um, I don't know if I can say this, but I got a call about uh, one of the members of my church tried out or auditioned for the praise singing team of a Bible quiz tournament. And the person that was accepting the auditions called their pastor and said, I want to know about so-and-so. And I go, yep. And I go, well, this person isn't the type of person to kick off their shoes and go for a victory lap. But that doesn't diminish from their intensity of prayer. Everybody prays and worships differently. But that world needs to hear you worship and it needs to hear you glorify your God. They need to know. They need to know who your God is. And they need to know who's given you the victory. They need to know as it doesn't matter how many times they beat you down. Because God. Because God. Because God. And I don't have to finish that statement. Because it begins and ends with God. Oh, that men would just praise the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good and his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So there's a few circumstances. And here's your call to action or whatever you want to call it. If you are in a dry land, if you are in a spiritual famine, Get a hold of God. Worship Him and praise Him for who He is. I know you guys get teach, taught, whatever the word is, the truth here. There's no excuse. What's that scripture? So they are without excuse? <laughs> There's no excuse. You get taught the truth here. If you don't know, you're putting blinders on. Take the blinders off. Take the blinders off, then take the shackles off. Oh, that man would just praise the Lord. Let's stand and let's praise him right now. Let's stand and worship him right now. Let's stand and give him the glory that is due his name. For he is good and his mercy endureth forever and his truth endureth to all generations. Hallelujah. you Lord Jesus you are worthy to be praised hallelujah glory to your name Lord Jesus praise you Jesus thank you brother Cash But it dawned on me as you were talking, you know, our praise and our worship can only come from our knowledge of Him. And it's not just something we should be doing in the dark, in the back, in the bad times, in the dark places. It took me a while to figure out how to say that out loud. But, But it's a part of who we should be and what we should do, day in and day out. But let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. But what is it that we are to understand and know him? That he is the Lord which exercises loving kindness and justice 
and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. When we know Him, it's easier to praise Him. When you know Him, you can't help but worship Him. He is a wonderful, wonderful Savior. He is a loving, loving God. We talk, we sing that song, You are a good, good Father when we know Him. Then we can worship and we can praise Him in sincerity. And then those dry places, Brother Cash, they turn into oases of life. And the floods recede into fertile plains. Let's take a moment. Let's praise the Lord. He is so worthy. He is so deserving of all our praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. If you are in a dark place right now, if, you are have, if you're in a time of trouble right now, come to the front and find somebody to worship the Lord with. Come to the front and, and praise the Lord with somebody. We are giving each other for strengthening. get so tempted sometimes to turn this into a praying for people and that's not what we're doing today we're worshiping the one who deserves all worship we're not looking at each other and our needs we're not trying to we're not even trying to build each other up we're looking at the lord of lords and saying, you deserve everything I have. You deserve all of my potential. You deserve all of my love. And you know, when we do that, it makes it easier for the person next to you to do that. And as we've heard so, so wonderfully this morning, keeping our eye on him, keeping him in worship, is what makes the difference here on this earth. If his will is to be done on earth as it is in heaven, it must be done in this earth, in these earthen vessels. Thank you, Brother Cash, and thank you, Sister Lisa. And thank you, Sister Debbie, for leading us in songs. Let's have a final word of prayer before we... Well, we got plenty of time. Lord Jesus, thank you for being such a wonderful Savior. Thank you for being a good and loving God. Thank you for refusing to be a God who changes. And so that your loving kindness is just as real today as it ever has been and ever will be. Lord, touch our hearts today, I pray. Move within us and allow us a greater dimension of worship. and Bring us into a greater dimension of praise. We thank you for it. And Lord, we give you all our worship. We give you all our praise. We love you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen.